Adrian and today I'm going to be looking at Amazona by Roxy Music and I've been meaning to look at a Roxy Music slash Phil Manzanera song for a while and I couldn't actually decide which song I was going to look at but in the end I went for this one mainly I think because of that main riff which I, I think is just such a great riff I think even if you're not a particular Roxy Music fan you will enjoy learning that riff but uh, there are plenty of other interesting things going on in this song as well there's a nice kind of odd meter middle section and then towards the end we've got lots of crazy effects laden soloing so i'm going to try and look at all of those things in the course of this lesson uh, let's get to it let's kick off with that main riff then and i suppose we're in the key of g for this song and we're going to start with this g bar chord just a, a regular six string root bar chord here at the at the third fret i'm going to hold that entire bar chord shape down um, though i'm just going to hit the lowest two or three strings in that chord rather than strumming the in entire thing. Um, you've got a couple of options with, with fingering here. You can finger this bar chord in, in the more conventional way or what Phil Manzanera seems to do from, from the videos I, I've watched is he plays his bar chords like this. Um, so uh, just playing the root note with the thumb wrapped over the top and index finger is just playing the, the two notes um, on the top two strings. So you know, you've got those two fingering options. Um, I kind of do both, I think, depending on, on, on what I'm doing, but uh, most of the time it feels slightly more comfortable to me to do the regular bar chord. Um, you might be one of those players who prefers the thumb over the top thing, in, in which case you can do that. So we're going to start with this bar chord. We're just going to hit it once. And we'll just hit the lowest couple of strings. Then we've got a couple of muted scratches, so a down up with the pick. Um, then we're coming up to this shape here, which is um, a little triad thing, I suppose. We've got a G triad going to a D triad. So it's, it's ninth fret on the D, seventh fret on the G, eighth fret on the B. It's a G, G major triad going to seventh fret on, on those same three strings, which is a D triad. Uh, very common little guitar move that. It's um, uh, you, you might know it from songs such as uh, Brown Sugar um, and, and many other songs. It's a, it's a very common kind of a thing. Um, so we, we're going G, G to D triad. Um, got another couple of muted strums. Then we're doing exactly the same move, two frets lower. Um, and that means we're playing an F to a C triad. And then another couple of muted strums. So, so far with, with that riff we have this. One more time. It's and uh, you, you might just want to slide into that first triad shape. I think that's what I'm hearing on the recording. So um, then we're coming back to our G chord shape again. Just hitting that once. Another couple of muted strums, then we're playing the fifth fret on the low E string once, and then the sixth fret, and then we've got this little move. Um, I guess the kind of thing you, you hear in uh, Hendrix's rhythm playing, although a lot of players do this kind of thing, um, playing the, the fifth fret on the G and the D, playing that double stop and then hammering down at the seventh fret on the D string. And then I'm just picking the G string at the fifth fret. So it's, so it's the double stop, hammer, and then picking the, the G string. So 
and uh, you want to make sure that you're coming down with that hammer on on the tip of your third finger just so that when you hammer down um, you get two notes ringing out and then catch the single note. Um, I like to do that with a down and an up stroke of the pick. Um, and then we're just doing exactly the same thing, we're just moving it over onto the D and the A strings. Um, exactly the same move. So. Um, and that, that's the end of the, the, the main riff really. So if I just put all of that together, we, we've got this. Um, as far as the rhythm goes, I mean, you, you may be one of those lucky people who can just pick up rhythmic things just by listening but um, if you need to you can uh, you can count this out um, and we're, we're playing the first chord on the one we've got one two and three and four um, and those little muted strums are really just there to, to, to keep time I think so you've got one and a two and three and four and a one and a two and three and four and so the second bar is one and a two and three and four and. So the whole thing one, two and three and four and a one, two and three and four and. The, that's the main riff um, and then I, I suppose in, in what is the, the verse of the song there's, there's kind of a, a variation on, on that riff that, that goes like this we've got um, um, so here we're again basing this off of our G bar chord shape um, either the bar chord like this or the bar chord with the thumb over the top and then we're just adding in a C note to make it kind of a, a G sus4 sound so we've got G strum twice um, a muted strum and then we're playing the sus4 um, and, and you can do it like this perhaps uh, moving your third and fourth fingers over to the, to the middle pair of strings muting the other strings or you could flatten down your third finger maybe um, or if you're doing the the bar chord like this you know, a, a few options there I'm not exactly sure how Phil Manzanera does it but as long as you get that sus4 sound in there somehow that that will work so we've got to, we've got this so rhythmically it's down up scratch up up and then we're hitting those uh, same triad shapes that we, we found in the main riff. So we're just playing the F to C triad. So all of that. And uh, you notice I'm just tending to keep my strumming hand moving just you know, scratching a little bit in between some of those chord hits just to just to keep time you don't need to make it sort of super scratchy like a, a funk guitar part but a, a little bit of that I think really helps with the groove um, so that's what I'm calling the, the verse section of the song. Um, and then towards the end of that, we just got this little uh, two bars worth of, of chords here that goes like this. So this is just all played with um, fifth string root bar chords. We're going from a C, one, two, three, to uh, kind of a D, D sharp, um, and then to a D. So we've got uh, two beats of C, two beats of D sharp, and then one hit on a D chord. Rhythm wise, it's kind of one, 
two, three, four, one, and. So notice on that D chord, we're playing it on an off beat. We're resting on one, and we're playing that chord hit on the and. So it's three, four, and one, and. So all of that is one, two, three, four, one, and. And I'm playing that down, down, up, down, 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 up. And that takes us into this really interesting uh, middle section, the, the, the bit that goes like this. Um, and uh, one of the interesting things about this is it's kind of in, in an odd meter, in an odd, odd time signature. Uh, up to this point we've been in the, in the, the normal kind of 4-4 four, four time signature. Um, this section of the song, I, I'm feeling it in 7, so I, I'm kind of counting 1, 2, Three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, there might be some other ways that you could count that, but to, to, to me, to feel it in uh, kind of a seven-four time signature makes sense, and that's that's the easiest uh, e easiest way to do it. Um, so it takes a little bit of getting used to um, if, if, you, if you've never played in these odd kind of time signatures before. Worth just listening to the recording, seeing if you can you know, count along and, and tap your foot in that section and, and keep track of where, where, the, uh, where the one is. Uh, but once you've got the hang of that, the actual guitar part here is, is, is fairly straightforward. Um, we're, we're starting on uh, the A note here, fifth fret on the low E string, and then we're sliding up to the eleventh fret on the D, and then playing the ninth fret on the D. Um, and then we're doing the same thing two frets lower. So sliding into the ninth fret and then playing the seventh fret. Um, and then the same thing on the A string. So nine to seven on the A string. Then we're playing the ninth fret again. Um, and then we've got a little seven, nine, seven hammer on. And then playing the ninth fret on the low E string. So, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, I, I think I'm detecting this little hammer on and pull off thing on the recording. It's a, it's a little bit hard to hear. Um, you, you could equally do it without that. simpler but I think I like that little uh, fluttering hammer on pull off thing so so that's the basic riff now all we're doing is we're moving it down the fretboard so that time we were starting on A um, next we're going to do exactly the same thing starting on G so exactly the same everything's just been moved down two frets then we do it two frets lower again starting from F And then we move it down one more fret to E. So we're actually starting now with the open string. Um, and then the whole thing repeats again um, on A. So as it turns around, you're just going to want to do a nice, efficient position change to, to keep time. So coming from the E riff. Um, I'm kind of going from my third finger, shifting up onto my index finger to start again. Um, so that's the uh, the little middle section of the song. Um, then the, the, the kind of the crazy soloing starts and I'm just going to talk a little bit about this. I'm not going to uh, talk you through the entire solo note for note. I don't think it's the kind of solo where it's very easy to either teach it or, or to learn it um, note for note, but I'm just going to talk generally about some of the things that are going on. I suppose perhaps the most interesting thing here is the actual guitar sound itself, which is amazing. I'm not quite sure how Phil Manzanera um, achieved it. I mean, it's a kind of, um, it sounds a bit like a phaser or some kind of filtering effect going on. Um, whether that was done with the effects pedal or whether Manzanera was perhaps going through some kind of analog synth filter section. I think he was known for, for doing that kind of thing, so possibly that, that is how it was uh, achieved. Um, so some of you might, might know exactly how it was done. If so, um, let, let me know. 
but uh, I think a kind of a, some kind of phaser or, or flanger with a bit of delay will, will get you in the right kind of ball, ballpark for this this kind of sound. Um, and we, the the solo kind of opens with with this this idea. We've got um, I'll just put on a little bit of distortion. We've got. Something like that. Just trying, trying to remember exactly, exactly how it goes. So um, we've got an A note here um, at the the seventh fret on the on the D string, and then we're, then we're just kind of sliding up. So eleven on the D, nine on the G, hammering on to eleven on the G, and then just just climbing up really. A B A on the B string, and then. sort of C, C sharp E, a quick pull off from E to D there and then going way up high. Um, so all, all kind of a, a, a major-y type, type sounds there. Um, th then the solo sort of goes off into the into the stratosphere um, and again I'm not going to teach you exactly what's going on. It's a lot, lot of just crazy bending stuff. I mean just to start with it's all in the key of uh, key of A so you could really just find sort of A major pentatonic, A minor pentatonic um, and do some kind of crazy bending stuff. Um, and th then it goes I think into a, a kind of a key change to B and the chords are going uh, really B, B minor to kind of a G major sound. Um, again lots of this extreme bending so, so perhaps you could find your your B minor pentatonic and um, just just do some some big bends um, and then the, the climax of the whole solo we've got some really kind of high bends which um, I, is impossible for me to do on this guitar actually I've just got a 21 fret neck on this jazz master um, I think Phil Manzanera usually plays on a, a Gibson Firebird so he's got the the 22nd fret and the solo ends with him bending like crazy on the uh, on the 22nd fret so a kind of D up to E but 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 an octave higher so if you've got a 22nd 22 fret neck guitar you might like to, to try that as well but um, I say not, not really a solo to learn note for note particularly but just to maybe try and capture the, the spirit of it um, pile on the effects and uh, and have a have a play around see what you come up with so that is it for this lesson. As usual, I'm going to put completely free, accurate, uh, possibly illegal music and tab up on my website. There'll be a link underneath this video. And if you haven't checked out my website before, you might like to do that where you'll find plenty of other song lesson videos and guitar related stuff. Uh, thanks for watching and I hope to see you again next time. Bye bye.